Ananta Koti Vaishnava Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Tas your Achutam, Tasya, of him, Hiranya Kashipu, Ogradanda, by the very fearful chastisement, Samvignaha, disturbed, Sarve, all. Lokaha, the planets, Sapalakaha, with their principal rulers, Anyatra, anywhere else, Alabdha, not obtaining, Sharana, shelter, Sharanam, for shelter. Yayuhu <coughs> approached Achyutam, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <coughs> Translation, everyone, including the rulers of various planets, was extremely distressed. Everyone was extremely distressed because of the severe punishment inflicted upon them by Hiranyakashipu. Fearful and disturbed, unable to find any other shelter, they at last surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu. And the purport by Śrīla Prabhupāda. Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 5.29, Moktāram yagitapasam sarvaloka maheshwaram Suhridham sarvabhutanam gyatva mam shantim ritchati. Translation is The sages, knowing me as the ultimate purpose of all sacrifices and austerities, the supreme lord of all planets and demigods, and the benefactor and well wisher of all living entities, attain peace from the pangs of material miseries. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is actually the best friend of everyone. In a condition of distress or misery, one wants to seek shelter of a well-wishing friend. The well-wishing friend of the perfect order is Lord Sri Krishna. Therefore, all the inhabitants of the various planets being unable to find any other shelter were obliged to seek shelter at the lotus feet of the Supreme Friend. If from the very beginning we seek shelter of the Supreme Friend, there will be no cause of danger. Interesting next sentence. It is said that if a dog is swimming in the water and one wants to cross the ocean by catching hold of the dog's tail, he is certainly foolish. Similarly, if in distress one seeks shelter of a demigod, he is foolish. 
for his efforts will be fruitless. In all circumstances, one should seek shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then there will be no danger under any circumstances. Tas yogra dhanda sam vignaha sarve loka sapalaka anyatra labdha sharana sharanam yayur achutam Everyone, including the rulers of the various planets, was extremely distressed because of the severe punishment inflicted upon them by Hiranyakashipu. Fearful and disturbed, unable to find any other shelter, they at last surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead Vishnu. lawn mowing guy showed up right at the time the class was beginning. He's going to be out there the whole morning. Um, once, once a month is plus period. Okay. I had Chapman pick that once a month. Or he did. Um... So the... The title of the chapter is Hiranyakashipu terrorizes the universe and the previous verses are describing how he did that or um, yeah, so, so powerful we hear this again and again about terrible kings who were terribly demoniac. Their, their business was they wanted to find a good fight and they couldn't find anyone who could fight them so they would go searching here and combat there and challenge here. And As the verse says, Ugradanda his rod of chastisement was brandished everywhere. Everyone was terribly afraid and being driven by that fear they surrender to the personality of Godhead Krishna indicates in the Bhagavad Gita that there are four types of pious people that approach him and offer some service, render service unto him. Chatur vidha bhajante mam janasukrita norjana. And this is one of them. Pious people that have a problem. They approach God for a solution to their problem. Um, so it, it makes it look like spend a little bit of time with this idea, makes it look like there is, God is partial. There's the good guys and the bad guys, and God's always on the side of the good guys, which means he, he doesn't like the bad guys. So he's not impartial. He's got favorites. And we know otherwise Samoham sarva bhuteshu name dvesho stina priya. He doesn't have favorites. Name dvesho stina priya. There's not those that I dislike and those that I like. He's neutral. In the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a very wonderful description of Shukadeva Goswami being approached um, after we'll go back Maharaj Prikshit asked Shukadeva Goswami at the end of the first canto um, what is the duty of people in general and especially someone who is about to die like me 
And second question he asked was, what is that subject matter that they should hear, chant, and always remember? Very relevant question. What is, what is it that we're supposed to do? Here we are in this human form of life. We just parachuted in and here we are. Now, what's our assignment? What's our job? What's our duty? How are we supposed to use this valuable human form of life? If we don't ask the question, for certain, we'll misuse it. It's not just by trial and error and try enough times and you get it right sometimes. It's, it doesn't happen that way because we're in the material world because of our adversity to the personality of Godhead. So it's not that we're going to hit on that one just by chance. It's by this in inquiry and submission. So Maharaj Prichit is doing like that and he gets the answer. There's nice robust description of what duty is. Form a, conce a personal conception of God. Fix the, the mind upon the form of God within the heart and progressively those two stages and then engage oneself fully in his unalloyed devotional service with no other shelter but the Supreme Personality of God. And what's that subject matter you should hear about? Krishna, you should hear Krishna Kata. And should hear it with great attention, with great eagerness, with great absorption. And there's the answer to your question. He, he actually he answered it repeatedly from different angles and then concluded, now I've answered your question. After Shukadeva Goswami spoke, Maharaj Prikshit, being the personality that he was, was really excited to hear more than if the subject matter is Krishna, then please deliver Krishna Kata, because Shukadeva Goswami, you can do it. You can do it because you not only perfectly learn it, in all of the Vedas, you've realized everything. And not only you've realized everything, you're living accordingly. You're a perfect devotee. And because you're a perfect devotee, the Personality of Godhead treats you like as equal. You're as good as the Personality of Godhead because the Personality of God, it empowers you in that way. Go, Shukadev, go. <laughs> More nectar about the topics of the Personality of Godhead. So then, after hearing from Maharaj Prikshit, Shukadev Goswami, it's perfectly relevant to this morning's verse, Shukadev Goswami doesn't right away begin speaking. Rather, he fixes his mind with absolute concentration upon the Personality of Godhead in a mood that says to the Lord, please enable me to be your instrument. Please give me the strength and the capacity and the purity to do what I'm being asked to do. And that's his qualification as a devotee. He doesn't act in a mood of independence. He acts only in this absolute mood of dependence. Absolutely dependent. And that's his nature, that's his qualification. That's his nature of pure devotion. So we'll go down a few notches and we'll come to the demigods and then down a whole bunch more notches and we come to us. But the demigods, they're also devotees. But they're not fixed like Shukadeva Goswami. They're devotees. They take shelter of Lord Vishnu. Especially they take shelter of Lord Vishnu 
when they've got a problem coming their way. As many people who are pious very seriously take shelter of God when they've got a problem coming their way. And so God is very kind. He sends problems their way so that they can then take shelter of Him. Shukadeva Goswami then speaks, again it's very relevant to this verse, he, said, he says, first let me offer my obeisances under the Supreme Personality of Godhead who brings the entire cosmic manifestation into existence. Yet at the same time, he who is the complete whole, he enters within the heart of his fragmental part and parcel living entity, which is inconceivable. Can you think of the whole entering into a fragmental part? It won't fit. I mean, besides, conceptually, how does it work? The whole, so he's appreciating. By your inconceivable potencies, you do everything. You, that supreme, that just as same address as here, achuta, infallible. Prabhupada would sometimes pronounce it infallible. There's the fallen chuta, conditioned soul, fallen, and the Lord is infallible. He can't fall. He's, he's infallible. He can't fail. He can't come under the jurisdiction of his own energy. He controls his own energy. So, the devotee, Shukadeva Goswami, caliber devotee, he knows the Supreme Lord is within the heart of every living being and he's making everything manifest, including my ability. Now he, Shukadeva Goswami already had like a super skill set. He knew how to do lots of things, like we may also know how to do a lot of things. Not as many things as we would like, but we know how to do some things. Um, we can put on our shoes, and we can walk across the floor, and we can go out the door and get in our car and turn on ignition and zoom, zoom down the street, and we can go to our job and do our work and come home and eat and digest our food, and we can do all kinds of things. Where does that ability come from? The devotee knows that that ability comes from Krishna. Proof is like that he can take it all away. He can take away our ability to tie our shoes. I know somebody that um, had recently had a heart attack and half of their body went completely numb. They couldn't tie their shoes. They, they couldn't even make sounds because the, the muscles in their face were frozen. They were numb. They couldn't speak. They could make a ooh sound, but they couldn't. So our, our abilities are not under our control. They're not, they're not our own. They're, they're borrowed or they're on loan from the Supreme Personality of God at a moment can take them away. So Shukadeva Goswami, caliber personalities understand that and they never think themselves independent of that same Supreme Personality of Godhead. So their, their consciousness is always with Him under all circumstance, not just under difficult circumstance. And that's what Prabhupada is saying at the conclusion of this purport. In all circumstances, one should, should seek shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then there will be no danger under any circumstances. So, there are the, those that are circumstantial devotees. Circumstance comes, they become devoted. Um, share a little. Um, New York City, New York Tattva topic. Um, after 9-11, so how many years ago it was, 
2001, but that year, um, people in New York got really religious. Maybe you read some reports about it, but um, they, they, they cordoned off the city. No one, unless you lived below Houston Street, no Canal Street, could enter into the southern tip of Manhattan. And everything above that was on every corner where there's, you know, a, to cross the street, cross the sidewalk, on the sidewalk to cross to the next sidewalk, cross the street. There was a little shrine set up every corner. Something, you know, of all different religions. Some crosses and some uh, Buddhist things and some Islamic things and all kinds of things. And kind of like the central repository was in Union Square Park, for whatever the reason it was, 14th Street and 5th Avenue. And the whole place was a place of prayer. So, um, people got really religious. We, um, we understood the mood. People were shocked. Their, 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 their bubble of safety burst. It's no longer you live in New York and you're okay because terrorism is over there and we're in New York City. They, they realized it could happen at, at any moment. So what we did, we had one devotee. We, we considered the strategy for, for two and a half weeks. One devotee sat with harmonium no other persons, no other instruments, and just very softly sang Hare Krishna. And people would sit around and listen and chant a sign that said something very milk toast, very, very, you know, non preachy. Just, you know, take shelter of the names of God for world peace or something like that. And, you know, for spiritual counseling, um, call such and such number. Just, you know, people were, were stressed out. Just so as to, to, to be part of the, the scene, but not to um, confront anybody's really highly sensitized sensibilities. And then we went deliberately after a certain period of time and went with about a dozen devotees and sat down it was one cartel, one redunga, one harmonium, just clapping hands, chanting. And as soon as we sat down, there were about a hundred people that sat down with us. And some people behind them standing. It, it reminded me of, you know, um, Washington Square Park in the 60s. There were peace signs and people with flowers and bouquets and, you know, flower power. And men in business suits, they were chanting, crying. There was a, as a I don't know what she was, an actress or a, or a model or something. She sat with the ladies. A man in his business suit sat with the kids. And a, a, a Chinese lady crying and crying, chanting, and ch you know, people were moved because their safety was gone. And what, where, where is their shelter? But God. Now it's business as usual. They forgot all that danger, and now it's you know, zoom, zoom. Let's enjoy. Let's enjoy. Let's enjoy. It's gone. That shelter taking is gone because it's circumstantial. So that's down here. The demigods are up much higher. They're administrating the affairs of the universe on behalf of the personality of Godhead. You know, they're 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 not just powerful, they're very responsible unto the personality of Godhead. But they've also have their position of enjoyment. Prabhupada explains this in previous verses about Hranikashipu. When one gets wealth and gets position and gets recognition. The tendency is to lose the sense of fastidiousness or carefulness for following the vidhis, 
the, the regulations that keep bring one to a purified state and keep one purified. I mean, Rani Kashipu was just reckless and just dismissed altogether. So he became Asura. The demigods, they also, sons of Kuvera, Indra, you know, the, the pride that's, that comes with material opulence, that's the fruit of piety, it's very strong. Pride is very strong. And the tendency, the influence of pride is, I don't have to do these things anymore. Like somebody may practice Krishna consciousness for some time and then think, hey, I don't need to rise early and attend Mangalarti and perform. You know, the early, that's for new people. That is not for new people, it's for all people. It's for those that want to go back to Godhead. Anyway, the, the demigods, they're circumstantial devotees. And we are more so in, these, in this plane. And that's the exception altogether is if one understands um, the point that Prabhupada is making here in the purport. Um, in all circumstances, one should seek shelter of the Supreme Personality of God, and then there will be no danger under any circumstances. So that means Prahlad Maharaj had no danger. Not so. He had big, big time danger. Haridas Thakur, no danger. Big time danger. Sanatan Goswami and Rupa Goswami, no danger. No, they're, 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 they're thrown in jail by the, the king, Muslim king, and so on. The associates of Lord Chaitanya, when they were checked by Chan Kazi, no danger. Danger. But how is that perceived? For, for the devotee, it's the, un the understanding is Krishna will surely protect. Let's say the coward boys. No danger. Every day there are demons. M many demons. Just like when they saw the Agasara demon, they were going along the path that they normally follow. And so, wow, look at this. It's a giant cave. We never saw this cave here before. Look how big it is. And inside it's completely dark. Wait a minute. You can smell that bad smell. That's not a cave. That's a big serpent. And that smell is rotting bodies inside the mouth of the serpent. But anyway, Krishna has always helped us. Come on, let's go. And they went inside the mouth of the serpent, which is just what the serpent wanted. But the serpent wanted something more. He wanted not just to kill coward boys, he wanted to kill Krishna. A very nice thing. As Krishna saw them entering into the mouths of the, cow, the serpent, he wanted to say to them, so why he didn't doesn't say, he wanted to say to them, don't do that. This serpent wants to kill you. And as they, but he didn't speak and he, was, he became influenced <clears throat> by his own Yogamaya potency, which is really mystifying. But his Yogamaya, Krishna's Yogamaya potency acts only by Krishna's will to enhance the sweetness of his pastimes. And so, as his devotees are covered by yoga maya potency, sometimes even Krishna, by his will, is covered by his own yoga maya potency, and then yoga maya receded, that inf particular bewildering influence, and he was thinking, these boys know nothing but me. They're completely dependent upon me. When they're in this dangerous situation, what are they going to do? He was concerned about their welfare. That's Krishna and his devotees. Krishna is so concerned about his devotees that at least in this particular situation, Krishna became bewildered. And then he became less bewildered and then began to consider, this is Shukadeva Goswami disclosing, he began to consider, how will I kill the, the demon 
Agasura, but not kill my devotee. So this is Krishna's dilemma. Protecting the devotee and annihilating the demon. So it looks like there's partiality. And our acharyas explain it's not partiality. Krishna is giving the best to both. For the devotee, he's extending protection. And for the non-devotee, he's extending protection. Protection against their nefarious activities. He's checking them from their nefarious activities so they won't become harmed as a result of their nefarious activities. So he checks. He doesn't permit their nefarious activities or in some cases he'll destroy so that they won't have to suffer the results of their nefarious activities. Although in some cases their nefarious activities go on. Just like um, Kazakhstan, to put in modern context instead of a Krishna book narration, the devotees are being put into very severe difficulty. Now, yayatam mam prapadyante tam sadaiba bhajamyaham, depending upon the faith of the individuals involved. How are they seeing the situation? Is their faith in Krishna diminishing because of this? Krishna, how can you let this happen? They're taking away our homes. They're so mean and cruel and brutal. Krishna, how are you letting this happen? They understand how it's happening. The people are mean and cruel and vicious. And they in turn will have to, who knows what fate they will have to experience. Besides, you know, the, the courts of modern law, the courts of Yamaraj, how much they'll have to suffer. But the devotees, I can, you know, from their, their, their devotees, despite the Muslim government, the nasty behavior of the Muslim government, because they have faith in Bibi Govinda Maharaj and Prabhupada. That's their shelter. And so he's traveling all around the world and making sure that they have... Of course, Krishna's making the, making the provision, but through him, Krishna's making the provision that they will have homes and they'll have places to stay where they'll be safe and protected and the cows will be protected and the worship will go on. They'll be protected. And the asuras, they'll be admonished. by one means or another, by civil means or by Yamaraj means. They'll be, they'll be punished, they'll be checked. There's justice in the universe, in other words. And the devotee knows that. So when, when Prabhupada is saying here, um, if in all circumstances one should seek shelter of the Supreme Personality of God, there will be no danger then under any circumstances. Well, there's the apparent danger, just like there's a Gasura and there's the little Harani Kashipus in Kazakhstan. So, the obstacle is there. The um, demoniac display is there. But Krishna's protection is there. And Krishna's protection is stronger. And the devotee knows that. And so, a nice example that Prabhupada gave is a small boy walking down the street holding the hand of his father. And here comes a barking dog. Woof, woof, woof. <laughs> Prabhupada said, bark, bark. And the boy looks at his father and he's completely okay. Because he knows, in every circumstance, my father has always protected me. And I saw this happening with, 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 a, with a boy and then another circumstance with a, with a dog, a small dog. I'll just quickly narrate. The, 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 the message is, one who has shelter, one who knows that there's shelter 
in a protector doesn't see the confrontation of a problem in the same way the one that doesn't have shelter. So in India, there's this phenomena of street dogs. They're pretty intense. They're really territorial. If another dog, I mean, if, if anybody, a person, what to speak of another dog comes in their dog kingdom, oh, the whole pack comes out and you know, shows their teeth. Look at these guys. You come here. We're going to chomp you up. You know, their hair is in the back of their head bristling and all five of them circle around this one little guy and, you know, he whimpers away and, you know, don't come back into our dog kingdom. Prabhupada described the border patrols are like that, you know, like territorial, like dogs. So, um, one morning I was going for a walk and I knew that there's a certain, you know, pack of dogs in a certain crossroads corner. And I was on a university campus and there was one professor who was walking his little poodle. You know, a cute little guy with little tail, little, you know, one of those little, little tiny terriers. And the dog saw this little dog. And they looked at each other and ran out. And so the professor picked up his dog under his arm and held up a stick in his hand and looked at the dogs. I saw that the, the dogs looked at the professor, looked at the stick, looked at each other, looked, did it a couple of times, and shrugged their shoulders and went back and laid down. The little terrier was his tail wagging, you know, licking his, licking the professor's face, you know, just happy as a lark, because he's protected. But that little terrier, had he not had the master, he would have been, you know, a piece of fur, floating around, torn to pieces. So, sanata and Anatta, the, the devotee understands that we have a master. And master means we serve him. But master also means protection. And so, um, in the face of, there's a little, there's a, the demons have a function. They help those that are conditional persons take shelter of the Supreme Lord. And then they're protected, and then the demon is admonished. So they, they get protected from their nefarious activities, the devotees get protected because the conditions are such. So much better to be like Shukadeva Goswami. I mean, maybe not thinking ourselves to be capable of on that platform, but unconditionally taking shelter of the personality of Godhead taking stock of each of the things that we do and before we do, fix our mind upon Him and in, this, in the mood, in prayer, calling upon the Lord to please help us not ever become independent of Him. One last Prabhupada story. Um, in New York, uh, Prabhupada was having an afternoon darshan before the evening class and there was a number of devotees in the room. I wasn't there but I was told about this afterwards. And Prabhupada was having one of those jolly times where he was asking the devotees questions and seeing if they could answer, answer the questions. So one of the questions he asked was, what's the difference between you and me? And they were glorifying Prabhupada very happily and Prabhupada was dismissing. He had a particular point in mind. And just before it was time to go take darshan of the deities and give class, Prabhupada said, the difference between you and me is you can fall down and I cannot. And it was a big 
Haribo, Jai Prabhupada. And then they went to the class. So before the class, Prabhupada came into the temple room, um, took darshan of the deity, paid obeisances, took darshan of the deities, and was saying some prayers softly. Then again, paid obeisances, went to the Vyasa san and gave Jai Radhamadava and gave class and left the temple room and back into his room. So the, the person who was standing by his side, his personal servant, asked Prabhupada, what were those prayers that you were reciting when you were standing before the deities? And Prabhupada's reply was, I was reciting prayers to Krishna, asking that he please never let me fall prey to his illusory energy, maya. And the devotee said to Prabhupada, but Prabhupada, I thought you said that you could never fall prey to maya. That was the difference between us and you. And then Prabhupada said, now you know why. I am always praying to Krishna. Please protect me. Please engage me in your service and protect me from your illusory energy. I am always praying like that. Therefore, I will never fall down. Nice story. So, in, don't wait for the circumstance to be very challenging and fearful and threatening and then you take shelter. Of that same spirit, whenever it is that you undertake some service and we're always serving, so in all circumstances of life, take shelter of the Personality of Godhead and be wary of the illusory energy because Maya is very strong. If you, I'm sure you've noticed, there's a lot of people that are in Maya, completely captivated by illusion. And then there's some of us that are trying to get out of the grips of Maya and it's not so easy. Maya is very strong, very strong because she's getting her strength from Krishna. And she has a big task, keeping all conditioned souls away from Krishna. She's, she's very good at it. We should be very careful, very, very careful. Take shelter always of Krishna, feel his protection. And in that circumstance, whatever it is that may come, danger may present itself, but Krishna's protection will always be there. That's the confidence that a devotee has. The devotee doesn't take unnecessary risks and do foolish things drive at break, breakneck speeds because I'm a devotee and I'm serving Krishna, so Krishna will protect me, or go out on the limbs somewhere of risk-taking. We don't do that because we don't want to put Krishna, exercise Krishna's protection unnecessarily. But Krishna will protect us if some circumstance arises. We have that confidence. Krishna. Any discussion or comments this morning? Yes, Mahaji. I'd like to make a comment. Because we were talking about the packs of dogs. Yeah. And I had a boss who went to India for the first time. And she was reading the story. She went to the New Delhi Temple. And she lived by. So um, she walked from that place to the temple. She went over to the temple and um, and a whole like fifty packs of dogs well, came in front of her and made the same noise that we were making that noise and, and she was so fearful, she said never in her life she seen dogs come like that and surrounded her like that. And she said, This is it, I'm gonna die today, you know, she said, I'm gonna get attacked, I'm gonna be killed today. So she just closed her eyes and, and chanted Mishnu prayers, crying and chanting Mishnu prayers. And, and said, this is it. I'm taking complete to each other to do what she did. And then after a while she saw, after the one Mishnu prayer, she opened her eyes, she saw another 
big dog came in. And when that dog came, and came near her, all the other dogs just left. And that dog walked her to the temple, right to the temple. Uh -huh. And she felt that the Sumashinade came in the form of the dog. That's how she felt. She felt safe. Uh -huh. And then she said she gave obeisance to that dog. She said, I don't know who you are. <laughs> Hare Krishna. I've got, a, I've got another dog story like that one. <clears throat> I, I used to teach in Vrindavan for the month of Kartik. The VIHE was held around the Kartik month. And what the devotees would do every Akadasi was take the Vrindavan Prikrama path after Mangalarti, right after Mangalarti, and go completely around the Purkrama path and come back just in time for greeting the deities. It was like a, a ritual for many devotees. So I was invited to come and I came. And as soon as we went out the door, I was, was a devotee pointed out, see that dog over there? He's here every morning for Mangalarti. Right there at the gate. He doesn't try to come in. He just waits at the gate. And then after Mangalarti, he goes home, wherever home is. But in every Akadasi, he knows it's Akadasi, and he accompanies the devotees in the whole Prikrama path the whole way. I said, wow, that's cool. Then we got to a certain place on the Prikrama path, and it's uh, kind of where you're almost at the bottom, the southern part, below Vrindavan town, and there's this, um, they're starting to go around and head north again. And there's off in the distance, there's a, an abandoned temple of some kind and a whole pack of dogs. So he was, the dog was, you know, going along with us, just like protecting us. So this pack of dogs came running out, woof, woof, woof. So he went zooming right into their pack. You know, I'm, I'm tougher than you guys, all six, ten of you, and I, you don't mess with me, and and just till we passed. Then he trotted along and joined us and looked up, and, and it happened a couple more times. And as soon as we got to the temple, we went in the gate, and, you know, I didn't see him pay obeisances, but everything but, and, you know, off he went. So it was like, who is this dog? Same idea, just um, in the service of the devotees. Like we know from Prabhupada's teachings that likely he was somebody that made some offense, but somehow in his past life so became a dog. But in gain of very regulated <laughs> in his devotional practices. We should be so regulated in our devotional practices. Any other? Yes? Um, as you were describing um, the Bhagasura and the coward boys, they thought, well, this is dangerous, but still we'll go in and Krishna will protect us. Yeah. It seems that that could also be a little bit of a... Yeah, we shouldn't, we shouldn't imitate the coward boys. Yeah. Right. Here's a dangerous situation. Let's go. <laughs> but they were... They were yeah, and not only and not only that it was it was is it's the Lord's Leela and they're on a platform where they're spontaneously moving by you know the internal potency and you know we're not we should see here is a situation it, I mentioned here's a situation where this is too risky I don't want to exercise Krishna's protection power and just do something so risky we take risks, but not unreasonable ones. We take risks for spreading Krishna consciousness, but we don't take unreasonable risks for spreading Krishna consciousness. But we take risks. Yes. Much, uh, here we see people like Hiranyakashipu, Ravana and others commit atrocities for a long time and then they are admonished. A saintly person, on the other hand, may commit an offense and he's punished very soon. 
Do we treat this as mercy of the Supreme Lord? Do we explain this as special mercy or? I'm not sure what you're asking. You know, he, his mercy and mercy. I mean, it's a time span. Like he's it's a time span, but you know, um, there may be so many situations that are that are different from those those examples that you gave. The Lord is merciful by His own will. He's not bound by any time, anything. So the, for 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 a saintly person, it, it, it may just overlook it. Or may you know correct it without any suffering. His protection is there for sure, without um, uh, any any set routine of how. I'll end with one more Prabhupada story. I just heard this one from Shama Sundar, as he was describing Prabhupada's magic. Prabhupada disciple Shamsundra said that they they had gone to Prabhupada received an invitation to um, to go to Mexico. So he went to Mexico. They were in Los Angeles and went it's not so far, let's go to Mexico. He went to Mexico and one of the programs that was arranged was in a bullfighting arena. And the place where they had Prabhupada seated was the very place where they would sacrifice, you know, because they, you know, they would kill the bulls, you know, the guys with the capes, and behind the cape is a sword, and they would stab the bull with a sword, and that's where they would bleed to death. And so the devotees understood that. They didn't know if Prabhupada understood that. They were very disturbed that that was the place, but there was a whole big crowd of people, and Prabhupada addressed them and answered their questions. And as they were going back to his room, they were walking slowly, and there was several big devotees, Brahmananda and some other, you know, physically big devotees. Um, and they saw off at a distance a Mexican fellow that was very obviously drunk. He said, very drunk. He was like, could hardly stand up. Very drunk. And they should have thought, you know, we need to, who knows what this fellow might do, and we should protect Prabhupada. But they weren't thinking like that, and sure enough, just as they were passing him, instantly, very quickly, the man came charging right at Prabhupada. And so fast, Shamsundra said that we didn't have a chance, because Prabhupada was in front, and they were behind, they didn't have a chance to react and protect Prabhupada. So Prabhupada took his walking stick, raised it in the air, and bonked the guy in the head, smashed his sombrero and the guy fell on the ground and Prabhupada just like you know straightened himself out and kept going like nothing happened I was just thinking about that story about if one's fully surrendered to Krishna there's there's no problems there's problems but Krishna will protect and sometimes Krishna's protection means bonk with your walking stick <laughs> like the the uh, Narada and the Cobra. I'm going to narrate that story this evening, but when the Cobra became Narada's devotee, the children understood that, you know, the Cobra isn't going to strike now because he's Narada's devotee. So they would tease and throw stones. And So he went to, next time Narada came, he said, you know, what should I do? You know, I, I understand I shouldn't bite the, the children, but, you know, this is oppressive. And Narada said to the cobra, I never said you can't raise your hood. So when, when a devotee has some obstacle, some danger, some difficulty, we take full shelter of Krishna and we take appropriate action, whatever is appropriate, not in a malicious, spiteful, hurtful way. We take, you know, Prabhupada didn't let the, the, the wildly intoxicated man harm him physically. He just did the needful and the man was stretched out on the floor and off he went. Because he's so drunk, just a tap and he's over. 
But we may have to take steps when some confrontation comes our way, some, something dangerous. But we're still, you know, abandon our sense of Krishna's protection. And by Krishna's directing our senses in that way, then we'll, in an appropriate and commensurate manner, act. Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah.